Hello, I'm Shailin Thuli. I'm an engineer in Android Developer Relations working on accessibility. And today, my colleague Yingle and I will be talking to you about two topics of interest to developers. I will first discuss accessibility checks that have just become available in Android Studio. Then, Yingle will talk about the state of accessibility in Jetpack Compose. The new checks in Android Studio are backed by the Accessibility Test Framework for Android, or ATF. So let's talk about ATF a little bit first. ATF is an open source project. ATF examines your views and the accessibility node info objects that are sent by the framework to accessibility services, and it offers suggestions for improving your app's accessibility. Common accessibility services include TalkBack, a screen reader used by blind and visually impaired users, and Switch Access, which lets users interact with Android devices using one or more switches. ATF has been available for many years, and developers have used ATF through various endpoints. For example, Accessibility Scanner Tool, available for free from the Play Store, runs ATF's checks under the hood. You can think of Accessibility Scanner as a front end for ATF. ATF checks can also be bundled with existing Espresso and Roboelectric test suites. And when that is done, ATF checks run along with existing tests and they flag accessibility issues in the UI. The same ATF checks are now available in Android Studio. These are available in Canary builds at the time of this recording, but should be landing in a stable studio release soon. These checks run automatically as you build your layouts, and if accessibility issues are found, suggestions show up in Studio's issue panel. And when you apply the recommended fix, the suggestions clear. And if you've minimized the issue panel, you can still know about the flagged issues by looking at the icon on the issue panel toggle button. So let's make things concrete by opening up Android Studio and writing some code and seeing how ATF suggestions can help you make your layouts more accessible. We'll focus on three common accessibility problems found in many apps, missing labels, inadequate touch targets, and poor contrast between foreground and background. Let's start with a simple demo of a missing label. Consider this image button, which does not have a content description. This image button cannot be properly discovered by screen reader users, and they will hear unlabeled button or something equally unhelpful when they focus on it. This generates an ATF warning in Studio's issue panel. Notice that Studio links out to support documentation, which provides greater detail about this and other issues related to content labeling, and which also shows you the recommended fixes. You can make the image button more accessible by adding a content description in the form of a localized string. And when you do that, the ATF warning in the issue panel disappears. Now let's demo how Studio surfaces ATF's checks related to inadequate touch targets. Consider this example of a 24 dB by 24 dB image button, which is not considered large enough for reliable interaction. This elicits a warning in the issue panel, along with the recommendation that you should make the image button at least 48 dB wide in 48 dB high. Why is this important? For users with limited touch, physical strength, or mobility, small touch targets may be difficult to interact with. Even users with perfect touch may struggle to easily use such controls if their touch precision is temporarily impaired. For example, when they're walking or riding a bus. Let's apply the suggested fix, setting a min width of 48 dB and a min height of 48 dB. This makes the ATF warning in the issue panel go away. Of course, this is only one way to increase the touch area of a view. You could also set the layout width and the layout height to 48 dB or larger. Or if you didn't want to make the icon larger, you could add some padding. You could also use the Touch Delegate API to redefine the hit rect and expand out the touchable area of a view beyond that view's actual bounds. And now let's demo how Studio Surfaces ATFs checks related to poor color contrast. So why is contrast so important? Many users with less than perfect vision struggle with content that is not sufficiently contrasted. And even users with great vision have trouble looking at screens with poor contrast in bright outdoor settings. Consider this text view with a gray text color over a light gray background color. The contrast between the two gray colors falls short of recommended contrast ratios. Studio surfaces a warning in the issue panel and notes that this view's text contrast ratio is only 3.56 to 1, and it recommends you increase to the best practice minimum ratio of 4.5 to 1 or higher. You can make the text a bit darker, or you can make the background a bit lighter, or you can do both, and that should fix the contrast ratio problem. Okay, so let's make the background a bit lighter, 
And doing this takes us beyond the recommended 4.5 to 1 contrast ratio, and the warning in the issue panel now goes away. You should strive for a 4.5 to 1 or higher ratio between foreground and background. For large text, defined as 18 point or higher for regular text, or 14 point or greater for bold text, a 3 to 1 contrast ratio might be adequate. Note that maintaining a good contrast ratio applies to images as well as to text. Also note that the contrast between pure white and pure black is 21 to 1, so you can have lots of room for creativity even while providing enough contrast. So we've looked at three ways in which the accessibility test framework checks in Studio can help you make your apps more accessible. ATF looks for many things beyond missing labels, inadequate touch targets, and poor contrast, but in the interest of time, we focused on those three checks here. These ATF checks can help you improve your app's accessibility while you are still developing the app, and you should strive to eliminate all of Studio's warnings. If you find that ATF and Studio have flagged something that is working well, you can opt to ignore the check. And finally, while these checks are invaluable, they are no substitute for manually testing your app with accessibility services. Automated checks have their limits. For example, Android Studio and the Accessibility Test Framework can tell you if you're missing a label, but they cannot evaluate if the label is actually helpful, and they cannot guarantee your UI's accessibility. You should manually test your apps by turning on services like TalkBack and Switch Access, and you should have actual users of assistive technologies try out your app. Please try out these checks in Studio. If you have suggestions for improvement, please file a bug in the issue tracker using the information provided in the talk description below. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague Ying Lei to tell you about the state of accessibility in Jetpack Compose. Over to you, Ying Lei. Thanks, Shilin. Hi, I'm Ying Lei. I'm a software engineer working on Android accessibility. I will talk about the current state of accessibility in Jetpack Compose. We have made a lot of progress in the past year, and we are excited to share it. Jetpack Compose is Android's modern toolkit for building native UI. It simplifies and accelerates UI development on Android. I will first give a very brief introduction of Jetpack Compose. Jetpack Compose is built around composable functions. These functions let you define your app's UI programmatically by describing its shape and data dependencies, rather than focusing on the process of the UI's construction. Here is an example of a simple composable function. It has two text elements vertically aligned in a column. The UI will look like this picture. Additionally, we've added a clickable modifier to make this UI clickable. In Compose, we use modifiers to change the behavior of composables. Most built-in composables like text or button have accessibility support out of the box. In this example, when we enable TalkBack and focus on the column, it will say Jetpack Compose, simple demo, double tap to activate. However, sometimes the framework needs more information to understand how to describe a UI element to the user. We call this information semantics. Jetpack Compose will convert this semantics to accessibility noting for objects in Android. I will talk about some of the most common use cases which require developer effort. The first use case I want to talk about is content description. In Jetpack Compose, content description is a mandatory parameter for icon image because it is very important for accessibility. Here, we have an icon button. The content description is currently now. When TalkBack focuses on the button, it will say, button. What does this button do? A TalkBack user has no idea. Now, let's set the content description to a localized string, remove item. This time, when TalkBack focuses on the button, it will say, remove item, button. It is much better, right? If an image icon is purely decorative, we should set the content description to now. In our example, the gingerbread image should use a now content description because the adjacent text already exposes the image's semantics. This will prevent TalkBack from announcing the image at all. When TalkBack focuses on the cart item, it will say, Gingerbread attack line, $4.99, QTY2. The second use case is accessibility action labels. Action labels are used to inform the user about actions that will happen when they interact with the UI element. 
If you are familiar with the view-based APIs, this is the same label parameter in viewcompat replace accessibility action method. Here, for the snack item, we apply a clickable modifier and supply an onclick callback, which will be performed when the item is clicked. By default, Talkback will describe the clickable with a hint, double tap to activate. You can customize the action label if you want. Here, we set the onclick label to a localized string show details. Now, when Talkback speaks the hint of this item, it will say, double tap to show details. The third use case is merging. Accessibility services like Talkback and Switch Access allow users to move focus across elements on the screen. It is important that elements are focused at the right granularity. If every single low-level composable in your screen is focused independently, a user will have to interact a lot to move across the screen. Here, we have a row of two text elements, total and surprise. By default, they are not merged. Talkback will focus separately on these two text elements. To merge the two text elements, we add a semantics modifier on the row, and we specify merge descendants equals true. Now, Talkback will focus on the two text elements as one block. Note that some UI elements like button and modifiers like focusable and clickable will do this for you. We've now shown some common accessibility use cases. As you saw, for these common use cases, Compose provides dedicated parameters like content description and onclick label. For less common use cases where there is no dedicated parameter, you can use the semantics modifier to directly set specific semantics properties. In this example, we mark certain texts as headings for accessibility, so users can quickly navigate between them. As I mentioned earlier, most built-in composables already have accessibility support and need very little extra developer effort. If you want to build your own custom UI components, you need to manually supply the semantics information. I recommend you read the code of the equivalent built-in Compose widget and specify the same semantics. And when possible, avoid the low-level semantics modifier in favor of high-level modifiers such as clickable or focusable, because a lot of them already have accessibility support built in. To learn more about Jetpack Compose and accessibility, check out the Android developer links. We also have a public issue tracker to report bugs or request new features. This information is provided in the talk description below. That was an overview of the new accessibility features for Android developers, accessibility checks in Android Studio, and Jetpack Compose accessibility. Please try them out. Suggestions and feedback through the posted links are very welcome. Thank you.